How you doing, Buckeye Nation? And there's nothing like a huge football game, and that's what we have this week. Second-ranked Ohio State at third-ranked Oregon, and we're here to break it down for you. Adam King and the one and only Dane Sansenbacher, Buckeye royalty, former receiver. Dane, let me ask you something. Last time Ohio State and Oregon met, it was here in Ohio Stadium, 35-28, and I was really shocked because I have said for years that they are the most overrated team in America, that they, they look good, they got nice uniforms, cute uniforms, but that they could not play physical football with a Big Ten team like Ohio State. I ate these words that day, and they, you, you told me you had just come back, you watched in this stadium, and what they have done, they've turned, uh, you know, Oregon used to have a bunch of track and fast guys. Now they got guys, they got some guys that can play physical football. And that was a wake up call for Ryan Day and Ohio State uh, yeah. when they got beat, right? I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I think you were, you were not alone in feeling that, that here's this Oregon team that we kind of thought we were going to push around, came into Ohio Stadium, and I think it left everybody here kind of like, what, what are we looking at here? And now having them join the Big Ten, and kind of take on that persona of the Big Ten. This is really the first time we're going to get to see it in action. Is this going to become the Big Ten rivalry in Big mm -hmm. Ten fashion that we kind of hope it does become? You know, and after that game, we saw a lot of changes, especially with the defense, Adam. Ryan Day has not forgotten about that game and what happened. I mean, that was a hard pill to swallow for him. I think that a little bit of Ryan Day's uh, toughness ran at Notre Dame came from a game like Oregon, where they kind of got shown to be a finesse team, and they do not like that word. And since that day, they have very much flipped. It is a whole different ballgame for Ohio State. I wouldn't go as far to say they have cute jerseys, as you, as you said, but I, you know, I will say uh, their jerseys are pretty cool, but I do think Ohio State is now the more physical team for sure. They weren't on that day. Remember, though, it was C.J. Stroud's first real test. It was his first season. And he played great And he played game. great. He missed Garrett Wilson on one throw that would have tied the ballgame, sent it to overtime. Instead, you know, Oregon won. It's the only win they've had in this series. So, in theory, you were 9-0 nine, uh, nine before that game in your prediction that Ohio State would be better than Oregon. I think that you're right. It was a changing point in the Ryan Day mindset that we have to get tougher. We cannot be a finesse football team. Let me ask you this, Dane. Um, I don't know what players are left, if any, that played on that day, but Ryan Day was there. Does he... Yeah. How much is that on his mind? How much does he bring up what happened here three years ago? I would think not much at all, to really? be honest with you. Yeah, because I think this team feels so much different than that team. To me, just watching the evolution of this Ohio State team become more and more that tough football team. That in trying to get away from that finesse, he, they clearly disdain that, that feeling of of being a finesse team. I think that running through Ryan Day's mind for probably two years there was the Oregon running back going up the middle, yeah. being untouched th what, three times I, and scoring long touchdowns. That's why Jim Knowles is here. That is why Jim Knowles and this entire defense is completely different. And he kind of alluded to that in his press conference. You know, they asked him, you know, what do you think about where the defense is now versus then? He said it's completely different. It's a whole different team. It's a whole different field. As you guys look at this Ohio State football team, they have a two-headed monster at running back. And I, I liked it at the news conference. They were talking about how just vicious both these guys mm -hmm. are. Do you think Chip Kelly and Ryan Day turn those guys loose and say, just go hammer them. Let's hammer them. Let's, let's prove once and for all we are a physical and we're going to play smash mouth football. You guys want to see what smash mouth is? Do we see that? I think they should do that, and I think they'll try. I think if you're Oregon on the other side, that's mission number one for defense. Don't let them run the ball down your throat. I mean, I would have to think if you're the Oregon defense, you're going to say, make Will Howard beat us. I mean, he's mm -hmm. of the guys, of the dangerous people on Ohio State's offense. You want to say, okay, let's put it in his hands. We haven't seen him in, in big games yet. We haven't seen him really tested. I mean, you got to kind of pick your poison on that offense. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't pick the two poison pills in the backfield. So I would, I would expect them to try to stop that run game. And they're running downhill. I mean, I, oh, that with, I mean and, they're, and they're feeding off each yeah, other. And they are, and it's... It's it terrifying. Like they're feeding off each other. They, well, because think about it. Both of them spent their careers 
being the number one back running constantly, now they get to go and take a deep breath and watch as the other guy gets him down to the 20 yard line and they tap the other one and go run. I mean, it's it's phenomenal. It's what you want in a dream scenario if you're Carlos Lachlan. I think you have to, have to establish the run. That's, you know, it, it, so often we hear coaches say that, but if you go to Oregon, their front four is really good. And if this offensive line can show up and show that they can dominate up front and then you let these running backs do what they've been doing, I mean, then you're talking about Jeremiah Smith. You're talking about Emeka Abuka becoming second thought. That's your that's your backup plan. I mean, that's, that's a pretty good backup plan. And, and we're going to talk about them in a minute. But I just want to say this. I spent most of the game Saturday watching the lineman block. I had binoculars, and I was zoomed in. And there is a nastiness mm -hmm. to this offensive line that I like, that they don't let up on the blocks. I love Seth McLaughlin, that guy, and mm -hmm. they're feeding off of him. Dane, when you get a line like that, that they don't quit blocking, and they, they're open in holes, and they, you, I don't have to tell you, offensive linemen love opening holes for a running back, and, and, and they love, I mean, the passing game's fun, and don't get me wrong, but they love getting down and dirty. Yeah. And I asked Seth after the game against Iowa, he goes, I said, you played in the SEC, how did this compare? He goes, this was great. He goes, it was great. I had so much fun being in there. He said, it was a ball. It was a fight. It was a street fight. Whatever they've done in that locker room, because it's not just the offensive linemen. It's been the wide receivers. Mm -hmm. It's been guy. how the running backs are running. All of them look like they have a chip on their shoulder. And that's what I think they do. Yeah. I, they do. And that's what Ohio State fans have been craving, is for that team that has been just straight hungry. It's oh, the talent has been there over the past few years, but I think you finally got a crew now that one has all the talent, but doesn't have rings, doesn't have championships, has all the hunger that you want to go along with it. It shows in the offensive line. It shows in the running backs. It shows in the receivers that aren't catching the ball. Mm -hmm. Even Will Howard's lowering his shoulder. I mean, it sets up for if you can take care of the ball on offense, all the other pieces are in place. You know, the other thing I loved, Adam, and if you look at Twitter, if you go back to what was going on during the first half, two turnovers, seven nothing, and you know Ryan Day had warned us all week. Mm -hmm. I said he was like uh, he was like Paul Revere. The Hawkeyes are coming because he kept saying these guys, mm -hmm. and they were. They're a very good football team, mm -hmm. very physical. They played against men. These guys were all seniors and juniors. They didn't have any kids out there. They didn't have a freshman, one-handed guy making grabs. We'll talk about. But but what I want to say is they faced adversity. And to me, this schedule has been perfect leading mm -hmm. to this way. You know, everyone's going, I don't know about the schedule. I didn't like the bye, but the schedule I think has been perfect. And I love the fact that they faced adversity in that game, two interceptions, and they kept their poise. And all, they, they say, went in at halftime. I said to Ryan, I said, what'd you say? He said, I said, we're playing great. Yep. We just got to clean it up. And we went out and we executed and we cleaned it up. We played really good in the first half. We just can't turn the ball over. And I love that, that they, because they, they could have put more points on. I thought they took the, the get, took the foot off the gas a little bit. Well, I last point, I think they did. I mean, they put Devin Brown a little. I mean, 35 to 7, might have been 35 to nothing at that point to put Devin Brown in. I'm, I was a little surprised. But going back to the point of the adversity, Michigan State wasn't easy. There was a point when that game was 10 to right. 7. They were coming off a, an interception that Will Howard will tell you was not a good throw into double coverage. But they responded with a drive right downfield. Jeremiah Smith making ridiculous plays as he does. I completely agree. I mean, I wouldn't want this team to go into Autzen Stadium and not have been tested and to have won every game by 60 because you don't know how they're going to respond. Now you do. That first half against Iowa, he's right. Ryan's right. They were moving the ball, and it just felt like one thing after another after another. I mean, Penalties and just dumb and, stuff. And like, you know, the fourth and two, keeping it with Will Howard. When you've got Quinshawn Junkins and Travion Henderson, just give them the ball and let them go. And, and I think they kind of kind of knew that. You look at the turnover, the fumble, the intercept. I mean, it's it was a lot of things that saw this Buckeye team stall. But really, there weren't any glaring issues. There wasn't anything that you said, that's worrisome heading to Oregon. And then they just went out in the second half and played their game. Same thing against Michigan State. Nothing that worried you. It just kind of was rough, and then they figured it out. If there is a, if there is a little bit of a caveat to that or a little bit of something you could see is they never got to a point where they're a little bit worried. 
That's the only thing that we haven't seen Ohio State go through because even they've been tested, right? You weren't worried. They worried. were down seven nothing to Marshall. You weren't worried. I wasn't worried. About people that. were people were right now. Uh, well. I mean, they ha- haven't gotten to a point where it's like you're actually starting to yeah. feel that squeeze. Yeah. So you you love it as a coach. You're like, okay, we've we've played our way through our little things, but haven't quite had that. That's really the only thing that's up in the air for this school. And this defense is rated near the top, Ohio State's. Number one in total defense. Yeah, and here's the bottom line. I know some people are saying, oh, I'm really concerned about the defense. Well, if you talk, when I talked to the offensive guys after the game, they said the defense won this game for us. They kept us in the game. And we have seen Ohio State get gashed by former Ohio State or former Ohio players, like the, the running back they had that was second in the nation running the ball, mm-hmm. nine touchdowns coming in. Now, he did get one, I think. But other than that, they shut that kid down, and the defense did that. I, I was, I'm was i really happy with how the defense is playing heading into this game going to Oregon. I think the one thing that people can sometimes forget with this defense is it's built to prevent the big play. Jim Knowles, when he when he sits down at his at, at the table up in the booth, his idea is, I'm fine if you get to the 50 yard line to the 40 yard line. I don't think that you can go from your 20 yard line to my end zone against my defense. And he does think that the one way you can kind of skirt that is by a big play. So it's designed to eliminate that, which was a big problem. And what we've seen all year is that play out where. I've always said this. I don't. I think I've said it on the radio. I don't believe in scripted drives. If, if if Oregon comes down the field and scores the first touchdown, don't sound the panic alarm, because those are drives that are perfectly scripted. Every time they walk up to the to the line of scrimmage, they know the next play. But once you get into real football, once you get against Jim Knowles going against another coordinator. He says, my defense can beat your defense. And every single time they have, they have gotten off the field one way or another. It's, uh, go, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Just, that's an outstanding point. And that's something as, as the casual fan watching, you might see the beginning of the Michigan State game or the first half of Iowa and think, oh, we're getting gashed. Mm-hmm. But that's going to happen sometimes. Yeah. As a defense, it's just going to happen. And Jim Knowles has said it in his post-game comments sometimes, like, hey, I thought they were going to do one thing. They did another thing. That's just the nature. Defense is reacting. You're not going to get it right all the time. But you're absolutely right. Those guys up there, they're seeing the long game, Mm -hmm. and they're betting that you can't make it all the way, and Mm -hmm. they can avoid your scores. And if you're looking at the total defensive production, they haven't given up those points. They also lead the nation in yards per game. So even though they're getting (laughs) they're still (laughs) shutting them down. Right. Last we'll find anything. Yeah. yeah. Last couple things. I see some similarities, especially on offense, between Ohio State and Oregon. They like to run the football. They have outstanding receivers. I would argue that Ohio State may have the two best receivers in America. Mm-hmm. Uh, in freshman, uh, uh, Jeremiah Smith. I mean, that kid just. And you know, it used to be sacrilege to say a freshman should be a Heisman candidate, but. If he keeps doing what he's doing, he's going to be a Heisman candidate. And he reminds Emeka, me of a young Dom Tiberi. And then a Mecca, mm-hmm. what he did, three. I mean, no, Oregon's got some pretty daggum good receivers too. Yeah, I, I, it's weird. It, it's funny how similar these teams are in a way. We try to try to find the difference. Both have quarterbacks that have had some success, but not success at the programs that they have. Still mm-hmm. trying to prove themselves. Have weapons around them. Have kind of built themselves around those weapons. I mean, Oregon may not have the star power that these Ohio State receivers have shown, but have a lot of players and have put a ton of points on the board. So, I mean, that's going to be, Ohio State's looking at this as one of the biggest challenges, obviously, they've faced from an opposing offense all season. I think they are incredibly similar. I think if you said, would you rather have Dylan Gabriel or Will Howard? I think it's probably a toss-up. I think at, at this point where they are both settling into their offenses, uh, I think if you said receiver core, I'm taking Ohio State. Running backs, I'm taking Ohio State. Line, I think they're probably similar in that regard. The thing where I think Ohio State gets the edge, and I love going to skull session this year because in skull session, these coaches, these players say things that they don't necessarily say in the interviews. Right. And the word I've heard so much is violent, angry. You know, these guys want to come out here and just play just aggressive, gritty football, as we talked about earlier. I think when you take the talent on Ohio State's roster and you add what is a mean football team, they're mad when they're on the field, you end up with where I think they earn the notch ahead of Oregon. 
And, and I think we'll learn a lot about Oregon's offense as they go up against this Buckeye defense. They've been tested a couple times this year against defenses that are nowhere compared to this Ohio State defense. Does it come down to which quarterback plays the best? Is this game on the quarterbacks or is that too much pressure? No, I think it, I think it does. As, as I'm trying to think and break down this game on where could there be edges, well, one, Ohio State's traveling across the country. You could yeah. say, okay, there's a little bit of that. Uh, two, you could say, yeah, Oregon has been more battle-tested in games that have come down to the wire. So if they get it close or they keep it close, that could be a problem. But I think it, it would boil down to if Oregon's defense is going to say, okay, Will Howard beat us, this would need to be the Will Howard game. This would need to be the game where he shows up and takes care of the ball, doesn't turn it over, and hopefully force Dylan Gabriel into turning the ball over on his end. How do you see it? Two things. Will Howard said in his press conference, he got to know when to hold him, he got to know when to fold him. He's got to know that on Saturday. He's got to know when to try to make a play, when to be a hero, and when to throw the ball away. If he does that, as he said, don't be a superstar. If he just gets the ball, distributes it to where it needs to go, I think he'll be just fine. I don't even think the game falls on him at that point, as long as he is the Will Howard we've seen in the first five games. The thing that worries me the most, we talk about this Ohio State defense. Everybody loves sacks. Everybody loves to get after the quarterback. Ohio State, in the back of their head, is going to have to worry about Dylan Gabriel getting out of the pocket, which is going to give Jack Sawyer and JT holding that edge one extra moment of, of thinking, do I want to go after him because if he gets out of here, he's 20 yards and gone. That worries me. His legs are the biggest thing that I'm concerned about in this game. Other than that, I think Ohio State probably gets the notch. Plus, Will Howard can run, too. Well, Will Howard can run, too. Exactly. So We'll see. We'll see. Uh, all right. Last thing. Who wins and why? Who wins and why? I don't have to give my score. You can if you I don't want. know. I don't have a score yet. Give me right. time. Uh, who wins and why? Ohio State wins this game. Uh, and why? Because this is a different Ohio State team. This is a different caliber of talent. Oregon is the number three team in the country. And, and if I'm wrong, I apologize. But they are number three because they've run out of teams to rank at number three. There's a reason when we started this season they dropped them down to eighth. Because the Ducks are still trying to find themselves a little bit. Ohio State, I think, has found themselves more. I think they go out there. And I don't necessarily know that we don't see the Will Howard game. And, and see this Buckeye team come back with quite the celebration on a plane ride that's a little bit long. Who wins it? Do you have a score? I don't have a score. I try to never give the score. Why? That's the fun part. Know, you, the whole game, you don't even, you're just, I'm so close. Come on, I just want to be right. go by the spread, which I don't know what it is Three right now. Three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah, I think we cover that. Okay. I, think, I think Ohio State wins. And I think when you match these teams up and you're looking at what is going to be the, I, I truly think this is an Ohio State game to lose. I think if that's you put them on put paper, it. Ohio State has the talent, they have the pedigree, and up to this point, there's nothing to tell us that they shouldn't be the better team when it comes to Saturday. And I think they've been so prepared in, in all those little things that we've mentioned. The talent's there, all those little things about how they talk, how you see this team act, interact, how you see them block. Um, those are all the little things that if those show up in Oregon, it's it's their game to lose. Let me just say this, and I don't mind giving a score. You know, I like to. I was close last week. I haven't week. figured it 35. out yet. Give I, me I'm going to give a score. It takes a minute. This is just, this is, it's here. Okay. 35-20, Ohio State wins. Wow. And I'll tell you why. They have been on a slow burn. You heard the word violent. Look They've been that talking camera. violent. They've been talking violent. And this is the game that they're going to feel good about themselves. I believe Ohio State's going to go in and make a statement, not only to Oregon, welcome to the Big Ten, Oregon, not only to Oregon, they're going to welcome the whole country to what Ohio State can be this year. They're going to make a statement. I like them 35-20. And you know, you've been around the players. This is an angry football team. Ohio State is angry, and this is their chance to go silence the critics. I thought by the end of that you were going to be in the camera lens. I just felt like tackling the cameraman a minute. Scott, I'm sorry. I was getting warm. Just, <laughs> he's ready to, to go anyway, play. He's Adam King, the one and only Dane Sansenbacher, and I'm Dom Tiberi. Keep it on 10 TV, 97.1 The Fan, and of course, all of our digital platforms and all of our platforms for the best Buckeye coverage there simply is.